All right, for the uh, for the special segment of Big Facts this time, we're going to do something a little different. We are. We each have compiled uh, 10 of our favorite Quentin Tarantino movies. Yes. Um, we're going to list them off, uh, 10, 10, 9, 9, 8, 8, until we get to number one. We'll put them all up here as we say them, and, uh, and we'll see how much we agree on the, uh, the decline or incline of Quentin Tarantino's career, depending on how you look at it. So, here are... Our top 10 <laughs> Quentin Tarantino movies. My number 10 is Sin City, which Why? technically he didn't really, he didn't really have, uh, he, he was just like a guest director on, um, but I had to really reach into the bucket here for uh, Quentin Tarantino movies because I thought I'd watched way more Quentin Tarantino. I, I've really fallen off the, the Tarantino wagon in like the past decade. I've probably seen 60% of the movies he's done. So Again, but like we said before, if someone's giving you, and we use drug references on this show because clearly 80% of America after what they've been through for the last 12 years in life probably have to do something to get by. Um, the, the One of the things we talked about is, again, with Sin City, one of the things I want to point out was, of course, he still, that's another time he worked with Bruce Willis. Granted, you know what I'm saying, of course, but, but again, like, even that whole genre, watching that film in black and white and that color, like, what, what what's the word I'm looking for here? It's uh, a, um, what's that, chrome, chrome effect? Uh, I don't know. I don't know right now. <laughs> but but I know what you're saying, though. Like that, the pl- I call it the Pleasantville effect. There you are. That was the first time I ever saw it. Yes. Um, yeah, that, that, the, the technical aspect of it was cool, but it was just a very interesting movie to watch. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, it's number 10, nothing special. Mm-hmm. What's your number 10? Uh, my number 10 was also Sin City, which was crazy because of the fact that number one, again, you want to, when you say top 10 Quentin Tarantino films, uh, again, like I say, again, that's, that's my point from the, the point before, which was again, if you give someone acid and now all of a sudden you're giving them Coke and or you're doing this, or if you give somebody a soda and now you're giving them freaking fucking Coke uh, Zero, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like to me, it's we, you you haven't fallen off. It's just your brain cells have been killed, and so now yeah. like it's it's so it's not so much. It's just ten, uh, since uh, Ten City or Sin City was mine. I'll say that. Uh, my number nine is is also kind of like a, a technical Tarantino movie. It's Four Rooms. Um, he directed a, a portion of the movie. Uh, if you ever saw it, it was like, it's, it's a different story, pretty much a different movie, short film taking place in each room in a hotel. And they all kind of coincide at some point. Um, and there was four different directors. I think Robert Rodriguez actually directed one of them. Um, but Quentin Tarantino did, was part of that. I thought that movie was, I watched that when I was younger. Somebody had recommended it to me because they were like, you like weird it, mm-hmm. check this out and it was definitely very weird and left a mark so it's mm-hmm. number nine for me mine was uh from dust till dawn okay yeah and to me that one was it might actually be his best acting performance go figure because he, he the, remember he's looking at you i thought you would have brought this up because you mentioned the foot thing old girls in it, but he's looking at her feet mm-hmm. i'm like what the f- are you doing <laughs> you're the first person to be a yeah. successful on-screen cuckold you're making us all watch your soft porn like, what gets you off more than what, making the world watch you get your fetish off? Just that. Okay. Or using the N-word. Oh, then there you go. <laughs> um, number eight is uh, Kill Bill Volume 1. I thought that was... Uh, it was it was a good it was a good effort and Michael Madsen um, being a, a bad guy is... I always welcome that. So, uh, and the, the whole scene with her trying to get free just like... Again, going back to the feet, it was that whole scene with her trying to get free out of the truck. It's been so long since I've seen Kill Bill, but there was like a scene where she was trying to get herself free and had to use her big toe to unlock something or get let herself loose. And it was like the most suspenseful scene, and it was all focused on her toe trying to work some magic. And wiggle, yeah, wiggle, <laughs> wiggle, wiggle. For me, for me, mine would have been. I, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. It would have been uh, hatefully. Okay. That's, and that's, that's why it's number eight, because I, I hate it. And eight, eight, eight. eight. <laughs> hateful eight is one of them. But I it didn't not, even make your list. It I, didn't I, make I, your didn't, list. I couldn't put it on there because I haven't seen it. I can't even speak on it. That's one. No, you the, did uh, see it. You couldn't get through it. Let's be honest. 
Say Actually, it. I did start it on Netflix. Right. I, I hate to talk about what we things. talk about. I mean, I'm just, we, this is an honest show. You told yeah. me you saw it, you couldn't get through it. I, like, but I saw the running time. I was like, no. <laughs> what, what is it with you in fucking running times? This is two hours and 47 minutes. What else are you doing with your life? I don't know, because I will sit down and watch a whole series back, uh, that ends up being like six hours in one you're evening. You're telling, the whole, world, you're telling about... the whole world four more years with Always Sunny in Philadelphia, but you can't get... How many minutes is in that seat? Those four years. It tricks you. Though. You're getting it in 20 minutes. Here's the thing. I don't confession time i don't like the kind like i don't like the kind of movies that i typically make i i want i would rather just like i want and your brother gets into this in the interview where you look to you know the television for education when i sit down to watch a movie i want the exact opposite i want my brain to be shut most of the time i want my brain to be shut off i, I just i'm looking for some escapism uh so i i, I don't I, I like just little that's why I've been on YouTube. I barely even watch movies anymore. I just watch uh, videos on YouTube. Like, the only movies that I've watched in the past year, really, are movies that were for, for the purposes of doing this show. It's crazy. Speaking of watching YouTube, subscribe. Yeah. Please. Yeah, do that. Uh, my number seven is Kill Bill Volume 2. Um, I thought it was a little better than Kill Bill Volume One. It went out with a it it went out with a bang. I think it was David Carradine. Uh, is that his that name? is him? The legend yeah. continues. Don't even think yeah. this is the guy that died from rest in peace. <laughs> um, and it think auto erotic fixation. I'm not going to say what happened because again, it's not about trampling on anybody's death. Rest in peace because he entertained me for a lot of Saturday mornings. I mean, and again, he had that whole Mr. Miyagi like you're not really even moving. Steven Seagal, Mr. Miyagi School of Karate. <sighs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, dude, you're moving slow, yeah. but it's cool. <laughs> and he had a man bag. <laughs> He's moving very slow these days. <laughs> Mine was uh, actually Kill Bill Volume 1. Okay. Kill Bill Volume 2 didn't make my list. To me, the origin story of Kill Bill Volume 1 was so neatly done, and it's one of those things that you mentioned earlier. Had it been another standalone director, it would have been much higher in my movie list. But again, mm -hmm. just like you say, if you're... Here's the thing. When they say the line, don't call it a comeback, I've seen pl plenty of people attempt to come back and be like, oh, I haven't acted in years, I've done this in years. Yeah, the rust shows. It didn't show in Kill Bill, which is why I even made the list. And I and I really love the story. And again, like I said, you are you vivica f***ing Fox, man. You know how to pull them out, kid. Uh, my number six is uh, the Django Unchained. Mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, of course, I mean, the performances in that are... It, it, that was kind of going back to... The good old days of Quentin Tarantino, where it was heavy on just very, very witty dialogue, and uh, and I mean, I was also very excited to see Leonardo DiCaprio finally in a Quentin Tarantino movie, and that didn't let me down. When you wait for something so long that it doesn't happen the way you want to, then you can't be let down. And I will agree. I'm not agreeing with you where that movie place is at, but I will agree with you. Like It was definitely good to see that it wasn't a letdown to see them two together. For me, mine would have been Once Upon a Time in Hollywood because, again, it, oh. it, no, and I'm just I'm being honest because, again, for me, it, it, it's, it's the second comeback. Again, what, I, what did I just say? Don't call it a comeback. If you're going to keep coming, uh, he mm -hmm. might be the, the best comeback director of all time after having classics. Like, I've seen people, Spielberg is always a hit. Scorsese yeah. is always a hit. Like, like, like when you have to come back for, as, from years off and not a scandal. Mm -hmm. Like, you just were gone. It's a yeah. scandal that we know of, anyway. Yeah, he was hanging with Weinstein. Well, weren't they, weren't they all? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, there goes our credibility and our uh, sponsorship. But everybody else, Patreon! <laughs> so your number six is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It okay. is. That's my number six. Don't worry, I got you, kid. My number five is Inglorious Bastards. We agree, then. Okay, cool. Because, yeah, that, I mean, that, you know, yeah, Brad Pitt mm -hmm. and... Uh, um, Talk about not another letdown. Their first time working together, not another letdown. And Eli Roth. Like, oh, the man. Batman, he was insane in it. And, um, and you mentioned that to me. That was the one you was like, I was like, dude, I'm, I'm yeah. not on Tarantino right now. You're like, you're like no, you, this one will, and you were right. Yeah, and, and I'm, am, I, am I wrong? Like that 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 movie projector scene at the end, locking the door, locking them all in there, watching your own face. Like to me, that was just oh my gosh! Man. Yeah. I was like, oh, oh, okay, this is happening. Yeah, that was beautiful, man. All right, this is where we're gonna part ways for sure. My number four is Jackie Brown. You know what's up? The rest of this is in pen. He has Jackie Brown in pencil. And see, that's that no. bullshit. Yes, he, no, you, I, the contrast won't allow this kid's film school real quick. It's, it's too much light for you to see the truth. I'll help you out later, kids. Because I started with number one, and by the time I got the number four, my pen ran out on Jackie Brown. Because like the truth my, will my, not, <laughs> the ink will make you think. Okay. 
<laughs> What's your number four? My number four has to be if I if I really want to think about it, if I really had to put this up there, I'm going to have to. I don't want to do it. It's got to be Reservoir Dogs. Okay. And you have to understand when me and you, this is around the time when me, not when me and you first met, but when me and you first started doing videos, you were like, dude, we're going to do this intro. And I'm like, well, why are we doing it this way? I'm like, I just thought it was somebody else. It's like, oh, I'm just, I, I did angle it like, but no. And then I go back and do my research and I'm like, oh, this comes from this movie, how we were dressed. And so that's kind of what, one of the first chapters of our lives to where like, okay, if we're going to do something. Let's control the control. We don't have a budget. Mm -hmm. We do have an idea and you got a black suit. Like we're, a crazy part is nobody has a, as a Versace suit, but clearly we both had suits prepared for death. Yeah, black suit, white shirt, black tie. For so he doesn't even wear suits, you know. But he had that. So my point is like, like Reservoir Dogs for me. And again, you if you watch Pulp Fiction like me without watching Reservoir, it was for me it was Pulp Fiction Reservoir Dogs. But again, if you have a chance, do Reservoir Dogs first, then go back and watch Pulp Fiction. Yeah, definitely. This is a very different pacing. Mm -hmm. uh, my number three is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um, it, that uh, so my number three spot is technically like my the number one spot as far as new Tarantino films go. I went and saw it in the theaters and I just it was one of those magical moments in the movie theater where he swept everybody up for the ride that was in the theater mm -hmm. and we were all in like we were in it we were we were with him wherever he decided to go because he, he did it effectively he did the movie effectively and again you get brad pitt back um leonardo uh leonardo dicaprio is that why am i losing my mind right now why do i feel like that's somebody that was else. leonardo dicaprio we're still missing somebody else though but yeah he's in it but yeah so you get them too and then there's like you're you're by the end of the movie when they are beating the shit out of a, a woman like brutally beating the shit out of a woman the whole theater is like laughing, cheering, because a great filmmaker is able to take you to those depths of humanity and allow you to appreciate the entertainment of it if it's done if it's done correctly. Like in Coffee Town, we saw a retard beat up. Yeah, exactly, and and it was just like the beginning, like the, the in the beginning with his movies, he was able to do that. He was kind of untouchable, where you can have like. Like he in Pulp Fiction, he had me cracking up at the fact that a that a dude got shot in the back of the car by John Travolta because they hit a bump. Like he made somebody getting shot in the head funny. Uh, Jackie Brown, the shooting her in the parking lot, he made that like relatable to the point that you're laughing at murder. And then he managed to do it again in his latest film, at Once Upon a Time. So I want to just three. really quick harken back to that scene. If you had to ask me which scene was more uh, satisfying, of course, it's Melanie being shot. But when you're talking about uh, Vincent in the back of the car, what was f***ing with me was, like, I, I, imagine being the black guy in the back seat. These people, you just saw them kill all of your friends, our associates. Mm -hmm. You don't know where they're taking you. But now this mother like some Seinfeld Marvin, yeah. if you was on the bow, like first he let, he wasn't even finna fucking kill him. No, there wasn't even. <laughs> it was just plan. an accident. <laughs> oh, and, and to quote Sam Jackson, "You want motherfucking a gut patrol because you're know, brain patrol." All right, for my my number three, um, the Django Unchained. Um, listen, uh, you have to, uh, again. I brought this up earlier in the uh a season. Is that I'm a type of person. I've had Beyonce, beautiful type woman, get pissed off at me because they all think I'm lying when I say. The movie theater is my diary. Like, I literally, I think you're one of the only few people, you make my top three list, like, that can go to the, I can go to the movies with, I, it's, it's my, it's a, I have a four. It's mm -hmm. my brother, Jayla, you, and my mom. And I, that's high praise for you. Because, like, I know going there, first off, everybody already knows the rules. And I won't have to re-explain really them. But my mom managed to break a rule that I allow, don't allow, ever. But it was so beautiful. Me and my mom went to go see the Django Unchained. It's the best date I ever had in my in life dude like the best date ever because it's like i don't know why we were even there i don't know i think i went to go take her to see something else and i was like it was sold out so like we'll watch the jingle and chain and it's like and now this is pre it's not pre cops murdering everybody in the world being f***ed up but it was pre everybody seeing it visually mm -hmm. so we go see it and it was like me and my mom were both able to laugh at racism we were both able to laugh and, and see a black superhero that did not fly mm -hmm. he did not fly all he had was a whip and imagine that's one thing if you thought Indiana Jones was bad with a whip, check out f***ing Jamie Foxx and the Django. He, yeah. he whipped it back and forth. So to me, it's not... Okay, so that's the sentimental reason why. But then to actually f***ing... I'm sorry, man. Christoph Waltz's best performance ever, in my opinion. That's just me hands... I, 
damn, man. Mm-hmm. And I told people this. This is what I don't think a lot of people see. I don't know whether I called you after the film or who I called, but I mind. I, I remember saying, oh, shit. They just pulled a reverse inverted fuck on the on everybody. Here's this piece because you you had the people who were like, oh, I don't want to see another slave movie. Well, this ain't it, mother. You mm-hmm. had people who were like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to, I want to forget my past. I don't want to remember that my my grandparents and great grandparents had cloths that we threw away or that we still have. Okay, this ain't that. What they did was at the end of this movie, also Samuel Jackson. I guess Quentin loves Sam. Mm-hmm. Sam loves Q. They. Make oh Samuel Jackson stood up for Steven? Quentin Tarantino against Spike Lee. When oh, I know, and and, and, and that I mean, guess what? That drove a, a little fun fact that drove a wedge between uh, obviously between Spike and Sam. And guess who got Spike and Sam back together? The woman in their lives, guys. Happy wife, happy life. With that being said, what really got me was that at the end they made the white man kill the white man and the black man kill the black man. Jamie Foxx killed Steven. Christoph Waltz killed Leonardo DiCaprio. Mm-hmm. And so it's not that why I love seeing a white man dead or a black man. No, it was like, here's this movie that should be all about race, slavery, and all these things that are going on. But at the end of the day, there's no such thing as black on black crime or white on white crime. Crime is crime. It's all about what's true to your heart. Mm-hmm. Here you had this Uncle Tom motherfucking Steven. Oh, they want that girl. That's what they had. They want that girl. Yeah, and, and and this slave being. Be, I'm sorry. You go ahead. I'm sorry. That's to me. That's meant so much to me. Uh, my my number two is was Reservoir Dogs, which was the second uh, Quentin Tarantino movie I saw. I saw that. I saw Pulp Fiction. I was like, what else has this dude done? And I heard Reservoir Dogs was it kind of had all of the quality of a really good student film that was just done very effectively. He took very little and he used it in his favor. Um, Michael Madsen, Harvey Keitel, Tim Roth, where her, her best scene in probably any Quentin Tarantino movie to me is in uh, Reservoir Dogs, where Harvey Keitel and Tim Roth are sitting in the car, they're staking out the place they're going to rob, and he, Harvey, Harvey Keitel is just kind of going over everything, like, you know, when we go to the door, uh, this time, what about this, da da da, he's like, what about that girl, Tim Roth without missing a beat, uh, right here, on my dick. <laughs> Do you know I still have a copy unopened of Reservoir Dogs that I bought from Walmart nine years ago on your uh, uh, recommendation? That's crazy. Yeah, but you have seen it, right? Yes, but okay. I didn't. But I didn't. I but by the time I went to see it, it was on. I was like, oh shit, let me watch it. I'm like, well, I'm not going to open it now. Yeah, and that's one of. The, I mean, oh, and Steve Buscemi, of course, too. And so you have like all these uh, callbacks. And see, and the kids out there, I know we haven't taught you guys a lesson in quite some time. Get in with your directors. As Lisa talked about, as some of our guests have talked about, mm-hmm. you know why? Because clearly if they like how you work, they'll keep working with you because you mentioned the name Tim Roth. Oh, and he single-handedly kept Michael Madsen's career afloat for the duration of Michael Madsen's career. Like, all of his best roles are given to him by Quentin Tarantino. And you mentioned that they brought him in the back seat and playing a bad guy and Kill Bill. Mm-hmm. My number two is Pulp Fiction. And I, I there's nothing I can say without causing a f***ing fire. So not even just between me and you, between the dedicated people who have the, have the tattoos and everything, listen. By at least half the comments in that thread. Yeah, we don't even need it. If you clearly just... It's my number two and it's plastered on my f***ing wall. By the way, there's no Jackie Brown posters in here. Let me just make sure that's clear. But there's, there was a DVD cover that left for some reason. But yes, with that being said, like, seriously, guys, like, all I'm just going to say is that... if is there, Okay, the highest reward you can get from me as a film is what I call TCM time capsule material and Pulp Fiction is definitely time capsule material Pulp Fiction does and I and I know we're discussing Jackie Brown so I will say the difference between Pulp Fiction and Jackie Brown is this is that no matter who you are or where you are for some reason you have should have heard the two ter- two words together Pulp Fiction. It transcends people who, ha- even people who hate movies. Mm-hmm. Like, even atheists know about the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get it. Like, to me, like, you can't not watch this. If you're a film student, you may know, no person who's made a successful film should ever be able to say the words, I've never heard or seen of uh, Pulp Fiction. So that's my number two. Okay. My number one is Pulp Fiction. Mm-hmm. And uh, for all the reasons that you said, and it holds a special place in my heart because it was, um, it's one of the movies that made me want to make movies. It, it, it's, one of, it's one of those movies that made me think differently about how to make movies, that you can kind of break the rules, that you don't have to tell something in a linear way, and it could actually make it more interesting if you, if you have a little bit of fun in post. 
Um, it was my reintroduction to John Travolta, and I was like, what the hell? This is Look Who's Talking. This right, is, right, like, right. I'm not used to seeing him. It, it was, I, think it, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd seen Samuel L. Jackson in, in, like, bit parts before Pulp Fiction, but that was my true introduction to everything Samuel L. Jackson could be. Long Kiss Goodnight. Was this before or after Long Kiss Goodnight? I didn't see Long Kiss Goodnight until I saw him in Pulp Fiction, and yeah, I was like, what else has he done? Okay, okay. Yeah, Gina Davis wasn't enough of a pull for me to watch oh Long Kiss Goodnight. Oh, my God. Sorry, Kiss Gina. Goodnight. Jesus Christ. She was coming on next week. Um, but, yeah, so Pulp Fiction is definitely number one for me. And uh, what is your number one? It's funny you say that. Um, I don't know if you heard this film. The year is 1997. The director is Quentin Tarantino. The film is Jackie Brown. <laughs> Jackie, you might as well just cut shit I said from earlier and really play, replay that. Uh, but uh, again, guys, listen. Um, and we'll to, just just to settle. Why because, are we settling anything? I can't. Yeah, e- I don't. I'm not. Well, because when when I said when I when I said like what I said about the um, about the comments on the post that I made, you had mentioned that. These are you bringing are, up our personal messages now? Live. Yeah, well, you had mentioned that these are. You said these are uh, these are unqualified people making these making these statements. Correct. So then I went and I showed you qualified people, which Rotten Tomatoes and people are like, well, we don't trust Rotten Tomatoes. How do you not trust Rotten Tomatoes? Rotten Tomatoes is the culmination of every critic out there as critics, qualified people to make judgment calls on okay. movies. Now, okay. we can often disagree with them, mm-hmm. but the general consensus between critics and audiences alike, Jackie Brown critic, 87%, Pulp Fiction critic, 92%. And even when you take it into the audience score, Jackie Brown, 85%, Pulp Fiction, 96%. So, again, like, it goes with my point. They're both fantastic movies, but... I would argue that Pulp Fiction is better. Here's the thing. I, you are qualified. They are not. And I mean <laughs> that with every every bottom pit of my heart. And let me explain why. I know you watched that movie. You didn't see, color is a spectrum to you. I know you didn't see any color. You just saw film. Mm-hmm. I, I know you looked up that stat. I Did you look up who works for Rotten Tomatoes? And I guarantee you. No, they that, that's what I'm saying. They pull from every every critic review. They cor- pull them okay. all into it. Okay, average. and these critics, demographically speaking, I, and this is what I'm saying. When I watched that, see, me and you watched the film the same way. I didn't watch it and say, finally, oh, yeah, Quentin Tarantino did a black film. Mm-hmm. What I said was, Quentin Tarantino has range. Whoever is, is his editor, we'll talk about that later. Like, this story was a Quentin Tarantino story, and I'm not going to pull the race card or anything like that. What I am pulling is the race application and saying that these critics that were polled, these sites that were polled, I'm guaranteeing you that our voice wasn't heard. And what I mean by our voice, I'm talking about movie lovers and the blurs. Because, again, I could have easily been like, damn, that's what I'm talking about. See what happens when he gets him some black material? Like, no. To me, this was an awesome film. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to be, so many people can be so obtuse. And I'm not going to do that. I'm going to look at this and say that the fact that they got that high of a score lets me know, not not that I'm right, but it revalidates how I feel. Because, Mm -hmm. again, I no, how many people that dig those polls lived where I lived or been through is what I went through. I've seen that. Like, how many of them can resonate with being a forty-four-year-old black woman and a woman being the superhero? Notice Quentin Tarantino has an affinity for women. Mm-hmm. This this movie, like we talked about, praises women so much, other than Melody. Yeah. But other than that, it praises women. And I'm just kind of like, oh my gosh, man, he's a pain. Like this is a she's being a. It's almost a different version of a Django and Chain. She is a she outsmarted. Everyone, mm-hmm. everyone, and after that, still try to give Max Cherry the pussy, which everyone wasn't that. Uh, oh, uh, that, I'll get into that too. Oh, We're oh, oh, oh. my ass might be dumb, but I ain't no dumb ass. All right, all right. So those are our uh, top ten Quentin Tarantino. Well, he got movies. Off that so see what happens when you start dropping facts. See, we went what, David? No, I'm just saying because you're getting me into points that I, I've got so many rooms for improvement. I thought we we're halfway through one. the show. Apparently, we we're just getting started. All right, here we go. So that that's our top ten. Uh, Quentin Tarantino, no denying the fact that he is an he is a fantastic filmmaker, and I think we both agree that Pulp Fiction and Jackie Brown are both great movies. No, I think we both agree that Pulp Fiction and Jackie Brown are out of this world movies that people should only hope to they one day make. That's true. I can agree with that. Find us in all these links that's coming up right now.
Why don't you subscribe? It'll last longer.